This is the Wally and Mathot Show. Now, here are your hosts, Brent Wallace and Mark Mathot. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wally and Mathot Show, brought to you by SportsInteraction.com. I'm Brent Wallace. He's Mark Mathot, lover of all things pillows. Uh, Math, I just want to get to one point we should bring up before we get any further in the show, and that is we were scheduled to have Kodak Black on the show, but he's a little behind things. <laughs> so we're hoping we can kind of twerk things out with him later and maybe have him as a guest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I love that video, by the way. It is, it is so good. I mean, and I just, if you know the rapper and all and his tendencies, it just makes it that much better. So I, uh, yeah, it's, that was entertaining, right? Like for, for that evening, Kodak Black was trending in line with the NHL, which is a, a match that I never thought would be, you know, created. Okay. There's all kind. there's a lot to unpack here. One, I know this will shock you, but I didn't know who Kodak Black was. Two, <laughs> it takes this kind of stuff for the NHL to garner the attention outside of being just this quasi sport over here, right? Like it needs these kinds of issues, yeah. which aren't necessarily what you exactly want to have, but this is what it takes for the league to get noticed. <laughs> and, it, and it looks like for those who don't know what we're talking about, there was a rapper who was at the Florida Panthers game and looked like he was fornicating with his girlfriend up in the box. <laughs> they were just grinding and dancing, but obviously a lot of memes came from this event. So yeah, no, I, you know, it's attention. Any press is good press, I guess. Right, Wally. So whatever. Uh, I, no question. I don't know. What are, to but say. are you saying that they were only grinding? Yeah, because there was another. Uh, did you see the other camera angle uh, yeah. where uh, the box next to them was taking a video, and she was just like twerking in a, in his midsection. No, I you know disagree. I mean? like she was backing it up in him. No. They obviously were banging in front of the whole building, man. Okay, were they? I, I, don't know. I, don't know. I I'm I, older. I, I hate that I, we're maybe, talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna quickly make a joke and move on, but anyway, uh, it's I don't I. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing though. It, if you are at that game with a child, would be bothersome, right? And I know I sound like a stiff old yeah. guy for saying that, but the point is, I, I mean, yeah, that's a little out of control. And but you're next know. to the Florida Panthers management, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was funny. See, that, that was good because you can see I the boss. And I think too. a lot of the, and I think a lot of their um their practice squad or black aces or yeah. whoever were also in that box, right? So right. they're <laughs> just you know, they want to look young players, but they don't want to look. They yeah. know, yeah, yeah, they know, and they know Kodak Black. Like I know Kodak Black, and I'm 36, so I can imagine these young players know him uh, very well. Anyway, yeah. uh, a lot of laughs though. I, I, the, the, the internet was having a kick with it, so it was good. I, I'll take this time to point out that I actually have Polaroid pictures. That's how old I am. We used to use a Kodak camera. Mm. You? Oh, there you go. That's a nice little play on words, Wally. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to move on. Uh, today's show brought right. to you by SportsInteraction.com, Canada's online casino and sportsbook. SportsInteraction.com slash Wally Mathot for the most competitive odds and online daily betting. Sports Interaction is Canada's online casino and sportsbook. And today, Meth, today, you get to go to SportsInteraction.com and place a bet on the Ottawa Senators, which has not been very frequent of late. They haven't played since January 1st. As you know, tonight they play in Calgary. It's their second game since December the 18th. They've only played 29 games this season, the second fewest in the National Hockey League. Um, I don't know how this is going to fare very well for the Ottawa Senators, but I don't feel like they should be anywhere close to being the favorite. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they're playing and we're actually doing this again. So this yeah. is, I, um, you know, Calgary, Calgary's going to be tough. I know that they're probably very hungry. I think they've lost two or three in a row now um, coming off their Eastern three swing. Games. They played against some pretty good teams. That, yeah. So uh, yeah. Ottawa's got a chance here, but I know as of late, Calgary's played very well against Ottawa. So <laughs> it almost kind of bounces out. I got to, I got to air to Calgary with this only because they're playing at home. They're going to be hungry. You know, Daryl Sutter's going to have that group ready to play tonight, and they're deep. So um, having said all that, they have been lacking some secondary scoring. Um, that plays into this a little bit. So I'm thinking it's going to be a low-scoring affair. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm going to say a 3-1 victory for Calgary. But again, this is a complete crapshoot at this point. Long layover with both teams, layoff rather. It's hard to say. Okay, I, all right. <clears throat> Here's a couple of points I want to make. One is, and there's a couple of points, is uh, Matt Murray's back in goal, 0-6 on the season, right? We haven't seen him win a game. No Tim Stutzler for the Ottawa Senators. They uh, 
I've not mm-hmm. played well on the road. Now, Calgary hasn't played well at home. They've actually played the fewest home games of anybody. I think they're four or five and correct four or four, three and four at home. Um, yeah. And Calgary has played four more games, though, since Ottawa's last game. And I think that's a huge factor. And I, if you watch, there's a Drake Batherson video by the Ottawa Senators who's mic'd up in practice yesterday. And he's talking a few times about his lungs burning and not being able to get up to altitude. And, I, and then Chucky chimes in as well. And I'm wondering if that is going to play a factor third period for a team that hasn't played a lot mm. at altitude to play against the Calgary Flames. And you, one point, point that, that gets missed Our is Daryl Sutter is not going to let them lose four in a row, I don't think. I agree. 5-1 Calgary Flames tonight. Wow. 5-1. Okay. <laughs> Sens faithful will not like that. Yeah. But I respect it. It's bold. And, and you made a really good point. Altitude, Calgary's a really good team. I know they've been struggling a little yeah. bit and they haven't played much at home. But um, all right, we'll see. You know what? Either way, a lot of really good storylines to follow with this team. Um, and, and that one that all these guys coming off uh, COVID protocol, especially, you mentioned the lungs comment by Batherson. And yeah. even for some of them, just not being on the ice very much. I feel like that's going to have a big uh, effect on them tonight. But we'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, Craig, just edit out the part where I said 5 1. Um, so let's. <laughs> I should point out also coming up in the show, Alex Formington is our guest today. Uh, we talked to him late last night, and he's uh, going to talk to us about playing Calgary and COVID and all this stuff that's going on. Uh, we're excited to have him on the mm-hmm. show, of course, brought to you by whitewaterbeer.ca. Um, Matt, no Tim Stutzla as we continue to hear about COVID cases. I, I think there's only now maybe Zub and Kachuk left that haven't had it. Um, yeah. At some point, like you just hear that I cringe every time now I hear COVID protocol in that term. It's going to take a lot out of their lineup uh, when they take him out. They're going to put Nick Paul in at center on that second line with Formington and Connor Brown. Uh, but that's, that's again, like another void for a lineup that's not very deep. They're going to lose another key player. Yeah, and they can't, I mean, we all know this, right? When this team's not running at full strength, they're, they're not even that deep to begin with. Right. Um, but right now, the good news, Wally, is that they've, I think it's mostly run its course. As you just mentioned, there's only a couple guys that have managed to avoid it. Um, you know, so I think you can rely on, or you could rather count on this team being at full strength for the rest of the year. I, a lot of games coming up too, Wally. Yeah. I mean, look at the schedule that they're going to have to make up for now. Uh, I, I had issues playing more than two or three games in a week, or even three games in a week to me seemed overwhelming at times. I don't know how they're going to get through this. It's going to be hard. Uh, and you almost got to think there's a window here, right? Like, <laughs> yes, maybe there are some teams that happen to get a couple spells of injuries and COVID issues and struggle a little bit with a compressed schedule. Does Ottawa with their youth maybe have an opportunity here to string together some wins? I mean, that, <laughs> I'm well, trying to be an optimist here, a glass half full guy. It's one of the, but are you going to run into injuries? And so, for a team that's not very deep and Ottawa going to be playing. So here's, I've done some math. I got the abacus out last night and here's what I, so <laughs> Ottawa was supposed to play 82 games in 197 days, which was 2.4 days in between games or one game every 2.4 days. Now, if the math yeah. stays in the season ends at the end of the April, it's 53 games in 107 days, which is 2.1 days, not significant when it sounds that way, but they're going to basically no. play every other day. Like, and you just brought Trust it up. Trust me, it's significant. Yeah. Imagine Thomas Shabbat. You're playing 30 uh, minutes a night. Well, that's so this is this is such a great experiment now, right? Okay, you want to play him 30 <laughs> minutes a night? Let's see how he handles playing. <laughs> like, so you're gonna be looking at 60 minutes worth of ice time every three days or whatever the math is. Like, it's it's insane. So he's <laughs> he's gonna be tested. Um honestly, and I, I mean this, this is an opportunity for them to hopefully maybe scale that back. Just let it ride. You know, you're going to struggle some nights. You're going to have a hard time and there are going to be some serious growing pains with this group. If you do scale back some of your top dogs ice time, but it's an opportunity for growth. You know, I, I hate talking that way. I feel like we had these discussions a lot last season in yeah. hopes that, you know, we would get past that hump and maybe get a little more progression. But quite frankly, this is just the the hand that they've been dealt with all the injuries and all the COVID protocols. Hopefully that's behind them now. Opportunity for guys, um, you know, on those second and third pairings, especially up front too, on those other lines to play a little bit more, set you up nicely for next season. But I, I mean, otherwise, Wally, I don't even know what to, what to say here. I mean, this is, this is not a good situation. That's a lot of hockey. Well, 
and, and NBA uses the term uh, uh, not time management, load management, man- load management. So load, do load management. Yeah. Yeah. So now do players do, is DJ or Pierre Dorian? Do they go? You know what? Like Igor Sokolov or Michael no. Delzato or whatever. Like we need you to spare some guys off here. We need you. Yeah, to but DJ. Up. DJ's not. I agree with you, Wally. That's a really good point that you brought up. But DJ's not going to sit Thomas Shabbat, right? Like he's no. Maybe maybe he won't even sit him on the bench. Maybe he'll. Yeah. <laughs> he might. He might rotate in. Um, you know, an extra defenseman and take out like maybe like a Hetherington or a Mete or whoever else is healthy and able to play. But you, you can't expect those top four or those top two lines up front to get, you know, interchanged with other guys. It ain't going to happen. This guy wants to win games. As you always like to say, coaches want to win. I know. There's but- no exception here with DJ. He doesn't care about the growth. He wants to win games. But he said it, Matt. Coaches never lie. He said, we're going to say it. a lot of, yeah, <laughs> coaches say. So, but he said we're just we're now in the development for development phase and it might have been pierre dory and i can't remember but they're now talking about this they yeah. they built in the excuse of we can develop now down the stretch i just don't see them sure. getting to that when you're the coach who's under every type under every night name says wins and losses that it's yeah. you're going to try and win every game you can uh, look i, I agree, don't see them sitting anybody for me no, I don't either. But I, I think I think we could all agree right now. This is just about goaltending for me, at least at this point. Like, you want to want you want sure. a storyline. You want to see what plays out. I want to see who emerges here. I want to see what Matt Murray can do now. Like, this is crunch time, and there's a lot of pressure in this group to win games. The fan base has it. You know, there's a has a deep hunger for more hockey at this point. We've been deprived. Um, you know, winning games always solves that. And I think if you can get some steady goaltending right now it'll just give a much clearer picture because right now that's, I think that's the biggest question mark in this group, in this locker room, in the organization. It's what the hell's happening between the pipes. They can figure out this goalie situation going into the summer. It'll give everybody kind of a nice little, nice little um, rest easy scenario where they don't have to go hunting for another number one. So I, for me, if you're going to ask me the analyst guy, yeah. what, what he's watching, I'm watching goaltending and that's it. Ed, no, a fair question. Like, if you can't stop the puck, look at the other side of, the, of Calgary tonight with Jacob Markstrom, right? Like, they're third overall in the league in goals against because he's been outstanding, and that's how they've been winning hockey games. Right now, I think exactly. they're sitting one point under the wild card, but they've played six yeah. fewer games or something than San Jose and, like, and L.A., right? So, yeah, like, it, it matters immensely about who's in goal. No, and that's what I'm saying. So you look at the lineup and we can go, oh, okay, well, Shabbat, JVD, that's a good yeah. little storyline, see how JVD does. Like, but really, Doesn't none matter. of that matters moving forward going into next year if you don't have a goalie, right? right. You can yeah. you can get all this progression from all your young guys, but you need somebody back there that brings confidence into the group. When you have a shaky goalie, it destroys the, the group confidence. So anyway, well, I know we've talked about that a lot. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but yeah, it's important. No, it's, it's our show. We can do what we want. Is when JBD... <laughs> is sitting at minus six because of struggling goaltending, right? It has a huge, it has a, it plays a part in the confidence of that hockey team. Mentally, and I don't say JBD. I'm just I saying anybody. Speak to right? that. Yeah. 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 Well, no, it, but it matters because when you're a young player and I love that you just brought that up, Wally, when you're younger, you're really like, trust me, winning is huge. But when you're trying to establish yourself at the NHL level, you're very much in almost a bit of a selfish mindset in that you're worried about your own game your own numbers and you want, and, it, and it's, it's self-serving, but it actually, it, it, it benefits the group, right? If you're accountable to your own play, it's a good thing. And, and, but if you're JBD or any of these other young guys and you're eating minus every other night and if they, you know, things are going well and the storylines aren't going good, you're hemmed in your own zone, weak goals are going by. That's all you're thinking about when you're going home. I can remember when I played with Columbus and we were on a losing team during my rookie year, like it drove me crazy. Like the one stat I could try to control was not getting scored on, but then a yeah. couple soft ones would get by and you'd get so deflated and it would affect your confidence. So those are the things that I'm going to be looking at. And then again, you mentioned a couple guys out, Stitzel's out. Um, there's some holes right now. And this, you know, having last change in Calgary tonight, it's going to be a good test for this group. Uh, one lineup change they're putting in, and that is Scott Sabrin is back in the lineup. He's going to play, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes, eight, whatever. Does it really matter? I mean, with Calgary, like they've got some tough guys. I, I don't mind, like, and I know Sabrin's not going to play a lot, 
but they're pretty, they're tough on the back end. They've got a couple big bodies back there, as we all know. Um, they've got a couple guys up front. I think just having a presence out there does help. I mean, Sabrin's not a full-time NHL player and we all know what he does out there. And, um, but he brings a little bit of energy. I just, on the road is tough. And I know that's why you brought it up. You get the last change. You don't get the right matchups. You know, if you have Sabrin's line up there on the fourth line, and then they come out with, you know, anybody, anybody in their hey. top. Yeah. Like, and I can name, I can name all their, their top three lines with Calgary are pretty deadly. Yeah. So um, that might be an, an area that the Calgary can expose, but if DJ smart saves them for, you know, the right time, you got to read the play, put them out there in neutral zone draws. It'll be okay. It'll eat some minutes, but I mean, it, you're going to see a shift. Now you're going to see a lot of minutes thrown towards those top lines with Ottawa. There's going to be a lot of responsibility there and, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it, but it's a young group, man. And this is, these are, these are learning experiences they gain from these games. So uh, I, I, again, I keep hammering home on this goaltending. If they can get yep. some solid goaltending and at least keep this close, I think the team can be in a good spot. Uh, it is game 15 in the battle of the Kachuk brothers. It is currently, I think seven to seven mm. uh, Brady, by the way, has seven points in, 14 games against his brother, Matthew. Uh, last guy I want to talk about uh, on this roster before we move on to our guest, which is actually the guy I want to talk about, Alex Formanton. We didn't get into the last show, but his game against Toronto, where he played a career high 1909. I know he's minus two and they lost six nothing. I think was arguably the best game he's played as an Ottawa Senator. And that's not a shot at him being minus two. And, but mm. I thought his game was outstanding. And he doesn't get enough attention, perhaps. Yeah. No, and well, and, but eventually it gets out there. I can I can promise you that his opponents know who he is. And I know that coaches probably mentioned him because of the speed. Huge threat, right? When you're yep. breaking out of the zone and you can lose spots. But yeah, he's come a long way. And <clears throat> I like his progression. Um, you know, you mentioned that that game, the good game he played well. And, uh, you know, they lost. And it wasn't a pretty one. But if he can continue that continue to bring in some speed. The finish for me is a big one. I mean, if you, if you can, if you can keep polishing and rounding off that game offensively and put that together, obviously I don't expect him to turn into Connor McDavid overnight where he can put together the hands with the feet, but having that element, that little scoring touch where you become a genuine threat offensively, when you do get into those little spaces where you can beat people to the puck, that's going to be a big part of his game. He's also a little chippy, Wally. Mm. That's another thing that he has. He's got a little bit of fire in him, and I love that. I love seeing that competitiveness. So that's been brought out a lot in him, and I've noticed that he, he can bark back when he wants to. He's, can, he can play chippy. Um, so that makes him a little bit more versatile up and down the lineup. So see what he can do moving forward. Um, I like his game. I did ask him about being a prick on the ice because he's a really good guy. And so it's interesting to see how those guys, <laughs> you know, flip that switch and become just that annoying guy on the ice. As a defenseman, sure. do you just want to punch these guys in the face constantly? And is, and is that exactly playing into his hand? <clears throat> yes and no. I mean, I think when you know a guy can handle himself, and I think yeah. form, Forms can. We've seen him where a couple times he's not a heavyweight, but he can, he can handle himself if he needs to. And that, that, that plays in the back of your mind as a defenseman when you're thinking of giving a forward an extra shot, right? Like if you know that he might give it or turn around and call you out, you might think times, right? If you're not really in the mood to get in a fight in front of everybody. So um, that's an element that he has and that makes him more dangerous. Um, I, I really do believe that if when he's with the right guys, some skilled players that can lay pucks into those right, those right areas, create some, some races, it makes Formington very, very uh, effective and dangerous. So add that, as you mentioned with the chippiness, Wally, it makes him a well-rounded player. And I, I really believe this. He's a, he's a PK guy. He's taken on that role. And, and when you have a player like him out there who's incredibly fast, arguably one of the fastest players in the NHL, it puts your it puts your opponent's power play on their heels. They're more concerned about it. They're thinking twice around the point when they're thinking of making that little extra move or take that extra second to make a shot. So he's he's found a role. I can you know, I can imagine he's going to be in NHL for a long time now if he yeah. can stay healthy, continue to perform and, and, and polish off and round off that offensive game. He's going to be a real good player for this team. Uh, RFA at the end of the year, I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to sign for. Same. And there's a lot of unknowns yeah. with his game, but you can see it. Like you can see all these things. And if he was, a, and I, I, I asked him this question in the interview and that was uh, how many goals would you have if you could score on a breakaway? Uh, it, it was, I just, mm. it's a subtle shot, but anyway, my point was 
like he if he can put that goal scoring with that he's he's going to light it up I, like i think that he's a, a legit yep, 20 agree. goal scorer in the national hockey league yeah, I agree. I agree. He's got it there. And and, and again, it, it just comes down to ice yeah. time, right? With a lot of these players like him, depending on where he fits in that lineup. Like if they go after a couple free agents this summer, it might trick him, it might uh might drop him down to that yeah. third or fourth line. But that's where he that's as a player, but, you have to make adjustments. And if you want more ice time and responsibility, you show the coach what you can do with that time and and hopefully you get you know promoted. But if he's killing penalties and playing third line, he's probably still at 15 minutes a night, maybe anyway, right? He's probably still in that wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah but just a little you're not bit below get that off 18. There. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. But the only thing to that is that you're not going to get that offensive production, right? Which sure. I think people are waiting for that little breakthrough. That's not, I mean, he might get a couple shorties because he's fast and he can, little, but yeah. you know, you're not going to get the points there. So you'll get the ice time, you'll get the minutes, but none of that matters. I think what it comes down to is at this level, you need to find a role. If that means you're a PK guy all of a sudden coming out of junior or, or NCAA where you yep. used to be a goal scorer, so be it. Find your way. If you have to fight a couple times, you have to lay some bodies out, kill some penalties, that's fine. That's surviving in the NHL. I will say Marty Havlat did okay as a third-line winger in Ottawa behind uh, Alfredson and Hosa. So, <laughs> yeah. so now, maybe, maybe that, that's – okay, the team was a little bit more deep, though, Wally. <laughs> a little bit. So, yeah, but maybe that's where yeah. he's going to find his path. Uh, all right, uh, coming Fair up, uh, we've got Alex Formanton after the break. Uh, you're watching the Wally Mathot Show. As always, our chat is brought to you by the cool, refreshing taste of whitewater beer. Pour a farmer's daughter or legion lager or high tide and enjoy the show today. Remember, go to shopwhitewater.ca. Use the Wally Mathot coupon code 15% off. Whitewater, brewed by friends for friends. And joining us now, one of our friends, Alex Foreman to number 10 now for the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Alex, glad to be here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, let's just start there. Are you happy to shred number 59 and take on number 10? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I had a pretty good year in Belleville with 10. And, you know, I grew up uh, wearing 10 for the Barry Colts. So just kind of wanted to go back to that number. And I uh, was lucky to get it this year. It seems like everybody who wears that number for the most part comes with speed. When I think of like Sean Donovan and whatnot, uh, are you aware of the players who have worn number 10 and come with the speed of Anthony Duclair being another one? Yeah. I mean, uh, like you said, I mean, it's a, a pretty fast number. It uh, looks good on a fast player. So um, I wore it always growing up and uh, always liked the look of number 10 on my back. So um, I'm happy with it. Speaking of numbers, our good friend John Proberg, who works in the TSN Stats Department, uh, has come up with today's Pearls of Wisdom. That's where we try to find a little more on each of the individuals in our show. So today we get to know Alex Formington a bit better. 100 is a number of total goals you scored in the OHL, AHL, and the NHL combined. Three shorthanded goals with Ottawa. The most by a senator in 56 NHL games, uh, in your first 56 NHL games. Three also... The uh, three of 11 NHL goals scored on Anti Ranta, and three goals scored against the Leafs, making it the most goals and points you've scored against any team. And I'm going to ask you, is it because you're from Barrie outside of Toronto that you enjoy playing the Leafs so much? Yeah, I think just, uh, I just enjoy it from, you know, growing up watching them. And um, I guess it just gives me that extra boost. Uh, you know, it's nice to go out and score against, a, I guess, a hometown team, I would say. So, um, and usually, I mean, I have a good crowd at the game, so uh, I want to impress them. So I guess it's just a little pushes me a little bit extra. Uh, you didn't have it in the last game. And I know the game, the score says 6 nothing. But would you say that perhaps that was your best game as an Ottawa Senator? You played 1909, a career high. You were flying. You were everywhere. And I know you just obviously didn't score. But would you rate that as, if not the best, arguably one of the best you've played? Yeah, I mean, just coming back from the break, um, you know, I just wanted to get my feet back into it and get back into a role. So, um, you know, I was lucky to get a, a good amount of ice time that game. And um, I think I was I was clicking with uh, Stutzel and Brownie near the end of the game there. So, um, I mean, it's obviously not the score that we wanted to, um, you know, come out to after the break. But um, we got another game tomorrow to bounce back and it'll be nice to get back to a game feel. 
I, like this is going to be obviously sarcastic, but do you remember how to play hockey? You played one game since December the 18th. It's crazy. Uh, you're going to play Calgary, and they have played four games since you last played the Leafs. It, it's just obviously it's a wild schedule. But what's this month been like for you guys? Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, we we practice and get prepared for a game, and then uh, you know, kind of last minute gets postponed. So um, it's uh, been tough that way. I mean, we can only do so much in practice to, you know, have that game-like feel. But um, always I find in a game it's another level. So um, it'll be nice to get back out there. Uh, does the term COVID protocol uh, make the back of your hair, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up? Like, it's been a wild year for the Ottawa Senators. And now there won't be any, obviously, your regular centerman is out of the lineup for tonight's game against Calgary and Tim Stutzla. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the protocols are always, you know, tough when we've been in, in the protocol for so long. So, um, but, you know, our safety's first and um, just trying to do whatever we can to um, get back to playing and get back to playing regularly with fans and stuff like that. So um, it's a bit of a grind, but um, it's definitely worth it in the end, I guess. I think Nick Paul said he's just going to try and find you and Connor Brown the puck where you're both speedy wingers. Have you talked to, to Paulie much about playing a – the game as he plays at center? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's just as skilled and, um, you know, he has great hands and, and great vision. So um, I'm excited to play with both of them. And both of them are, uh, uh, well, Brownie has uh, some good vision out there too. So um, it should be uh, should be fun and hopefully uh, we can connect on a couple. How many goals would you have this season if you could score on a breakaway? You really had to throw that one in there, eh? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I mean, sure uh, if I was going to ask it or not. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's you... digging a little deep on me. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it would be a different story, I guess, if I, I wasn't getting the chances. But, um, yeah, it's one thing that, you know, I work on and um, always trying to get better at that too. So, you know, just having that confidence coming in on our breakaway and, um, I get enough of them, so um, it's just about converting and stuff like that. But um, it's obviously a thing that I work on after practice and before, so uh, hopefully that can get a lot better. I, and I, and I, I, won't, I do it in jest because, listen, I've never played in the National Hockey League, so I'm fully on board with anything you can do on the ice. But do you get chirped by it uh, from your teammates? Uh, a lot of guys like to throw a couple of chirps out there, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, all I could do is really just keep practicing and stuff like that. But uh, a lot of the guys, I like to just say, I mean, uh, where's their breakaways? So, um, like I That's said, right. it's a different story if I'm not getting them. But um, definitely the conversion rate uh, has to go up. So um, it's one thing that's uh, on my mind and going to work hard towards. Uh, part of, though, you talking about the speed and, and being and having those chances. That's why you've moved up in the lineup and playing arguably the second line. Uh, where's the confidence level in your game right now with the way that you've been playing? Yeah, I mean, uh, moving up in the lineup and um, getting more chances and more ice time, it uh, definitely helps out with the confidence. And that's how I want to play is, uh, you know, a fast, confident game. And, um, you know, whether it's being good in the D zone or, you know, converting in the O zone with my line mates. And I just want to use my speed to, uh, you know, create that space for my line mates and, uh, you know, hopefully just keep that ball rolling. Do you bring up the World Junior Championship at all to either Eric Brandstrom or Philip Gustafson, who were on the Swedish team when you, well, you scored the empty net goal that won the gold medal game uh, for Canada? Is it is it quiet? Like, also, we should point out Drake Batherson and Victor Mete also on Team Canada for that. Is it is it get brought up at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, around World Juniors, uh, guys are always asking, uh, you know, did you play? Did you play? And I think uh, me, me, Bather, and Vic are, are uh, pretty proud of wearing that gold around our neck. So um, we like to give it to a couple of guys that were in that tournament. And Chucky always uh, seems to say that people only remember the outdoor game that tournament, but um, I mean, I have a gold medal in my room, so I like that better, I think. It's so good. Um, speaking of wearing things, you and Victor Mete, by the way, uh, good Halloween costume, by the way, in, back in uh, in October. 
uh, who who came up with this? Uh, I don't remember who came up with it. I know we were looking at uh, a bunch of ideas, uh, Power Rangers, anything to do with a, a set of four. So um, we saw this one online and um, I said, just give me the silver, <laughs> silver paint and I'll be the Tin <laughs> Man. So um, I think it turned out pretty well, though. It's awesome. Like, this is really well done. Did the paint stay on? Uh, I mean, it was uh, pretty hot in my costume. So once I started sweating it, kind of getting into my eyes, but um, it stayed on for the picture. And that was basically the one thing that we wanted was a, a really good picture altogether. So I like that. Yeah, well done. Uh, are you and Victor Mete pretty close? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've always been close since, uh, since playing back in London. And, um, you know, when he moved on and I was in London, you know, checking in on each other and stuff like that. And I mean, uh, pretty much like a once in a lifetime opportunity to, you know, get to play on the same team of, as him in the OHL and in the NHL. So um, I've been having fun with that. You were an 11th round pick into the OHL by London. Did you think you had any shot of playing in the National Hockey League? I mean, yeah, uh, I was a very small player. I think I was 145, 5'6", five, when I got drafted to London. So, um, you know, always hearing that uh, kind of a, as a small guy, scouts are uh, saying, like, maybe too small to play and stuff like that. But I think just always having that in the back of my mind, it helped me get to where I am today. I mean, having that extra grit and, you know, being able to prove guys wrong is, is kind of my thing. So, um yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was always obviously a dream of mine to play in the NHL, and uh, I just worked towards that. Uh, that chip that's on your shoulder, is that why you're such a prick on the ice? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I've always had a gritty game, even if I was uh, that small. It's uh, still trying to throw my 165 pounds around. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've always had that grit, and uh finally got uh, a little bit of height as the years went on and some weight so uh makes things a little bit easier so, like are you a chirper or are you just a guy that's just like i watch your game and i can see myself doing the same thing of just sticking guys a little extra and all that stuff that annoys people to no end do you say much or you just use your annoying body positioning most of the time uh i don't really like to say much no i mean if if someone comes at me it's obviously uh just to, to speak back but um mostly just try and use my speed and um you know get under guys skin and just put myself in positions where it's annoying for other people so <laughs> i think it's just a, a part of my game and i think it, it helps me get involved in the game of just doing that type of stuff did you want to fight connor clifton which is your first and only so far against the boston bruins uh, back in november or was it just it just happened. I've watched the replay over. You guys bump along the back of the glass, and you skate up the ice a bit. You're staying in his face, so I'm just curious of how that played out. Was I don't think anything was said. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of emotions in the game, so um, it was just kind of a lot of pushing back and forth during the game, and um, just led to a fight. But um, feel pretty bad about that one because next day was was in the protocol, and we were kind of face to face, so. Um, feel pretty bad about that. That's interesting you say that. I was gonna, uh, I'm gonna get to that COVID protocol in a sec. Is um, you got the takedown? So are you happy with the way your first NHL fight went? Yeah, I mean it's uh, just about you know standing up for yourself and protecting yourself out there. So um, I'm happy with how it goes, and um, I'm sure it won't be the last. But uh, yeah, like I said before, there's a lot of emotions. So. Um, yeah. you know, sometimes it, it leads uh, longer than others. Um, does, I'm just does Tim Stutzle ever go? Listen, don't bring me into your stuff on the ice because I I have no desire to be in one. No, I don't know. He uh, he might get dragged into one uh, sooner <laughs> or later. But um, like I said before, I just uh, protect each other out there. I mean, if someone's jumping me or or brownie, he's got to hop in. So that's good. Uh, November the 11th is when you were added to the list. You said when you came back, it took me a little bit to come back. It feels good now. Towards the end of quarantine, um, it started to feel a bit better, but that you had some strong symptoms. Was it tough to get kind of your conditioning back? And I've heard it from a few players of just, it's so hard 
I guess the breathing wise, just to get back into game shape, if you will. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I had it, uh, probably one of the worst on the team. Um, it hit me pretty hard respiratory wise and, um, you know, just super achy. I think I had pretty much every symptom in the book, but I'd say it was pretty hard, you know, just being that 10 days and, um, you know, I couldn't get cleared to work out till my symptoms were gone and they lasted a while. So, um, just trying to get that conditioning back up and into a game, game like feeling was, uh, pretty tough. Um, especially having that tight chest and stuff like that. So, um, it was a long quarantine, but I'm glad to be back to normal now. Yeah. Cause you were guys in one of the first, you were one of the first groups, I think of, uh, and they weren't canceling games. When you look back at it now, and I understand you guys were the guinea pigs, same with the New York Islanders. Are you a little annoyed that you didn't get some games canceled before it happened? Yeah, I mean, uh, we were not sure how many guys we were down at one point, but, um, you know, still playing the games. And, um, yeah. I mean, some of them were tough losses there. So um, it'd be nice to get those games back. But um, like you said, we were the guinea pigs. And um, whenever they shut us down, they thought that was the right time. So um, nothing we can do about it now and got to move on from it. But um, hopefully we can uh, make back up those wins. Uh, good political answer. Uh, by the way, you are still remain the youngest Ottawa Senator to ever debut. Uh, 18 years, 24 days. Um, you, you got to play that one game that year. Like, what? Were, and you signed, obviously you signed a deal as an 18-year-old. What was it like for you to come and make that team out of camp that year uh, and to get the new deal and to sign your first contract? Yeah, I mean, it was surreal to, you know, sign and, and play that one game that year whether it was, I mean, it was only one game and very minimal ice time, but, you know, to practice with the team and stuff like that and just learn what it is to be a pro was, I think, huge for me going back to London. So um, I was very grateful for that opportunity. Okay, so I always ask this, what was your first big purchase with your first signing of your contract? <laughs> it would have been uh, a car. I mean, a uh, pretty big car guy and uh, just knowing that once I had a, enough money to purchase a, a nice car for me, I think that was uh, what I had my eyes set on. What would be the dream car for Alex Formington? Hmm. I'd say uh, I'd say any type of McLaren. I think I think yeah. those are nice, good-looking cars and uh, fast enough to drive. <laughs> Tough for the winter in London. Yeah, yeah, not a ideal car to to purchase, <laughs> but uh, nice. I mean, it's it's got to be a dream car. So, uh, fair enough. Craig Anderson's a big car guy. So, did you chat with him much about cars when you were around? Uh, not much about cars, but uh, I know he likes uh, like racing simulators and stuff like that, and uh, I know he likes to take cars out on the track. So, I was pretty interested in that. Did you ever go? No, I uh, <laughs> I do really want to take a car around the track, though. Sounds pretty fun. You should, yeah, Calabogie or whatever. Uh, we should hook that up. <laughs> so, like, what – I don't want to ask you what you drive now, but w what's been your favorite car that you've been able to purchase so far? Uh, I'd say I got a older Mercedes uh, – C63 507 edition. I think it's the last year of that make that they made the V8 engine. So um, have that uh, in the garage, which is nice and um, pretty much get to drive that all all winter. And I'd say that's my favorite, you know. So are, like, are you going to be like a Jay Leno kind of guy that have just a full garage full of cars when you're done playing hockey? Yeah, I mean, uh, that'd be my, my dream goal is to, you know, build a massive garage and have a little car collection, I think. And even if I have to downgrade on the house size and make a bigger, bigger garage, I'm willing to do that. <laughs> nice. Can you fix them or do you just, just buff them and clean? Uh, my dad's a mechanic, but uh, I don't pay good enough attention when he's fixing stuff. So um, I would not be able to fix a car or change a tire right now, to be honest. But um, definitely funny. when I get back home, I think that's uh, one of the things I need to learn. I should say, like, as you're going to learn it, lean in now, you become an RFA at the end of the year. Are you, are you anxiously approaching this or do you just pay no attention? Uh, it's 
I'm going to assume it's on your mind a little bit. Yeah, I mean, my main focus is, you know, this year and helping out the team as much as I can. And, um, you know, that's in the back of your mind, but um, that's kind of just for the summer thing and stuff like that. So um, it's just, you know, playing well and wherever I'm putting in the lineup, uh, make sure I'm succeeding and helping out there. So um, I think that's my main focus. Do you have a welcome to the NHL moment? Uh, I'd say just like playing that first game. I mean, uh, it was against uh, Detroit and, you know, playing against guys that I grew up watching and getting to be on the same ice and, you know, the crowd in, in Ottawa was good. And I'd say just that whole night of playing my first game was was a welcome moment. I said, you might not even remember what crowds are like these days. Um, your, do you have a... I guess it is your hobby car collecting or cars. Is there something else that you like to do when you're in your downtime? Uh, I mean, me and uh, me and Mete got into uh, sports cards uh, this summer. You know, just collecting uh, different really? different sports cards and and players and stuff like that. So I'd say that's kind of the new hobby right now. Do you have like your favorite? uh favorite sports card or favorite player yeah like well we can do both but let's start with your favorite sports card like i have it's funny you say that i just cleaned out the basement and i've got a box of cards from like the 90s and stuff and i've just started looking at some of the prices or whatever i've got and i've i ruined a wayne gretzky rookie card because i used it in my spokes on my bike don't <laughs> even ask um so i I'm, i've started to look back up and how much things are going for and stuff so i was just curious if you've got like a card that uh is your favorite I like to collect uh, like NBA NBA cards, uh, basketball. So I mean, any of the top rookies now, like Lamelo Ball, are are kind of the guys to to get for rookie cards. And um, it's a it's a pretty crazy hobby, though. I mean, it's uh, I think it's starting to to spark up uh, more in in different cities and stuff like that, and different hobby shops. But um, yeah, I mean, me and Mete like to um, collect. He collects soccer for the most part. Uh, I don't really know much in soccer at all, but uh, NBA cards are probably probably my favorite. Now, as a sport, though, if you could, what sport would you play outside of hockey? Aren't you a big baseball guy? My dad played baseball, but uh, I can't really. I don't have the good enough coordination to swing swing the bat for baseball. <laughs> but uh, I played soccer growing up, but was mostly thrown in uh, in goalie. So obviously, that I guess. That's a sign that I wasn't too good at that, but um, <laughs> probably a sport that I'd play outside of hockey. I don't know. I'm pretty big into Formula One, like maybe a, a race car driver or something like that. Nice. Yeah. So what did you think of the Netflix series? Have you I think it's uh, really well shot. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I love that series and hopefully they just continue that every season. I'd watch it. It's amazing what they've done with that series. Uh, one of our favorite questions is, what's your favorite snack when you're sitting at home watching a movie? You don't have a game the next day. Is there something you cheat on? If we don't have a game the next day and I've been pretty good, maybe a, a Cinnabon from uh, Cineholic in, uh, in Ottawa. <laughs> Interesting. That's, That's a go -to. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Eh? Okay. Um, you're... You're the owner of Tight Apparel, which is a clothing company, which I think you launched, I want to say, at least two years ago, if not three. Um, how is that going and why at such a young age or how did you come into this? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, me and my brother and another buddy from back home. And we always just wanted to have uh, a comfy streetwear clothing company that, you know, we thought it would be really cool if, you know, one day we have enough money to, to just get it launched and get to rock your own brand. So um as of now it's kind of on a pause because my brother's in uh barbados for um veterinarian school but um i'm sure we'll have some uh start it back up when he gets back and um do some cool charity stuff or we're all about uh you know making shirts for charity and giving back and stuff like that so um hopefully uh when he gets back we can start it back up and uh get it going again yeah there's great stuff on the website tightapparel.ca there is also the formanton t-shirt with the car wheels as your skates uh is that a big seller 
Yeah, I mean, it was uh, a group of my buddies back home calling me race car feet. <laughs> so they uh, decided to make a, a t-shirt and um, a lot of my family and uh, friends have that t-shirt and get a good kick out of it. So um, I laugh every time I see it, but yeah, they, they love the good nickname as a uh, race car feet. <laughs> It is. It's really well done. Do you have different nicknames other than forms on the team? Not really. No. Uh, a lot of the guys call me like Formo or Forms, just uh, classic uh, <laughs> hockey uh, nickname, I guess, just shortening the last name. So um, haven't had any uh, crazy ones lately. Yeah, it's not for me, which surprises me. Um, What's DJ Smith like in the room if you guys are trailing after a period? Trailing after a period? I yeah. mean, I would just say... Yeah. I don't um, want to know the nice just, DJ. <laughs> I'd say just consistently intense. I mean, uh, he's an intense guy, and obviously our team is pretty intense. So, I mean, if we're trailing, you know, he's telling us, uh, you know, what we got to get back to, and our team identity is, is, identity is kind of our main thing of, you know, sticking to that and... We know how to uh, win games when we're playing our identity. So um, I'd say if we're trailing, we'd kind of get back to the to the simple things. Uh, does he chew gum that loudly on the – like, can you hear him chewing gum on the bench? <laughs> no, I can't really hear him, uh, especially with a mask <laughs> on. No, but, uh, yes, he does, uh, does love his gum. He, yeah, he's got strong jaws, no question about it. Um, <laughs> When, so you're going to face a Calgary team tonight that has lost three straight games. You're in Calgary. You haven't played since January the 1st. Uh, we use this as a cliche to say you got to come out play hard in the first couple of shifts or first 10 minutes. But is this a reality of how you've got to play tonight going into that game? Yeah, I mean, we know it's going to be a first, uh, you know, a, a tough first period. And we got to be ready for that. You know, it's a, a hungry team. And, uh, you know, we haven't played in, in a while. So, um, you know, getting back to that game, game like feeling, we can't come out, you know, slow and flat. And uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a fast paced game. So um, I think it's, uh, you know, really focusing on that, that first six minutes. I looked it up somewhere. Now I can't find it. I think you're going to have to play like 53 games in 107 days. Uh, are you guys concerned with? injuries at all has that been discussed about just how you're going to take care of your bodies to try and dr cram in that kind of uh, hockey over the next little while here yeah i mean i think it's just uh you know having a, a strong mentality you know we haven't really thought of you know injuries and you know missing more games if they're they're closer together but you know just being strong mentally that you know we have a good game you have a bad game you gotta you know flip the page pretty quick so um we just got to be grateful that, you know, we get to play all those games and um, it's going to be tough, but um, I think uh, we're a strong uh, group mentally and uh, we're ready for the task. Now that you've established yourself as a full-time NHL player uh, about to sign a new contract, uh, what is your favorite part about playing in the National Hockey League, about being an NHLer? I'd say just the amount of good people you're surrounded by. I mean, uh, everyone in the organization and, you know, just getting to do everything with teammates is uh, the thing that I enjoy the most. I mean, road trips and stuff like that, just getting to spend time with your teammates is uh, probably my favorite thing right now. How much do you, like, what? I don't even know what you are like on the road as a group right now because the quarantine is so tough. Are, is everybody tired of being in their rooms alone? Yeah, I mean, it's tough being in the rooms alone, but, um, you know, hopefully we can get over this and get back to, you know, hanging out and having really nice dinners and stuff like that. And that's what it's all about. I mean, is gelling outside of the rink and I, I feel like it transfers good into chemistry on, on the ice. Uh, what's it like in a quiet building when there's no fans and you're trying to play a hockey game? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, tough in between whistles, you know, having it almost dead silent and, um, yeah. you know, it, it's nice when you kind of have that extra fan jump and, you know, hearing them, it, it helps you push a little bit extra. But um, like I said before, you know, we just got to deal with the task at hand and 
uh, move on to the next team. Do you remember the reaction from the crowd? Uh, I, I don't, I can't remember if you scored on the road or not. When you scored your first NHL goal, like that, just that emotion of what it's like to to do at that kind of level. Yeah, I mean, uh, I scored my first goal on the road in Arizona, so um, we probably had a, a couple boos when I scored, but <laughs> um, I just remember uh, that feeling of. Uh, you know, relief to get the first one over with and uh, move on to the next and hopefully uh, can just keep that going. Have you thought of your, but before I let you go, have you thought of your Halloween costume for next year at all? Uh, I haven't, no. But uh, I got a good amount of time to come up with uh, another good one. <laughs> I, I want to keep going. I and think keep like the Beatles. A step further. It, well, fair enough. You should be like the Beatles or the Teletubbies. You wouldn't remember the Teletubbies. You're too young. Never mind. No, I know the Teletubbies. That was actually one of our options. Power Rangers, Teletubbies, <laughs> uh, Ninja Turtles. I forget the other ones, but oh, yeah. uh, ended up being Wizard of Oz. Well, I look forward to whatever you guys come up with. I also enjoy watching you play on the ice because I, I love the style you play at. It is fun to watch. The speed is fun. Uh, I like that you get to mix it up, and, and it's just – You've been fun to watch here as you grow into a full-time NHL player. So, Alex Formington, we wish you all the best, and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. And thank you once again to Alex Formington. Uh, this show, by the way, helping to be brought to you by BEI Bonisher Excavating, Inc., Bonisher specializes in excavation, grading, drainage projects, and of course, equipment rentals, aggregate, and topsoil sales. BonisherExcavating.com, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Uh, once and welcome, welcome once again to the show. Craig, my good friend, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you guys doing? Great. It's, by the way, uh, it's birthday day for Austin Watson, uh, turning uh, 30 years mm. old. Uh, tomorrow, it's another friend of the show, Connor Brown. He's 28. Uh, I should also point out today is Connor McDavid's birthday. Um, and I, he yesterday had some interesting things to say. Of course, we've heard all about Evander Kane uh, going to perhaps sign in Edmonton after whatever this investigation is. And then he was asked about, I, I guess, basically having a player with that kind of reputation and baggage coming in. Matt, do you have any problem with bringing in a player that's created issues, if you will, on several different occasions joining your hockey team at a basically win at all costs. I feel like this question just sets me up for failure immediately, <laughs> but I'll answer it. Um, I, uh, I, I, I guess I'm a general manager. I'm, I'm reluctant, right? Like I'm going to be concerned. I'm going to have to, you know, do my due diligence and, and a little bit of digging and make sure that he's got the right mindset coming into my team. And that's very hard to do. Cause you know that, that his camp and his agent are going to be saying all the right things. Um, but to your point and question with regards to McDavid, I think, you know, he was just, he's defending Ken, he's defending his general manager. And, um, you know, I, th I think it would be unfair to pass judgment on a player before you even have the opportunity to meet him. You know, I, I've met Vander Kane. I've had workouts with him at the world championships. He's a, he's a, he's a nice guy. He's made some mistakes. Absolutely. Uh, and, and does him being nice to me during a workout absolve him from any of his mistakes? Absolutely not. But um, if it means, a, you know, that he's trying to be better, um, that he wants to change and that he's a good player. And, and, and let's, let's just get one thing clear here. And this happens in every pro sport. And I've said this before on the show as a player, if you do happen to have some off ice issues or whatever, you got to make sure that your talent outweighs your baggage in a Vander Kane's position case right now, his talent absolutely outweighs his baggage. You may not like that. A lot of people may not like that, but it's the, it's just the truth. He was tearing it up in the American league just now, as of late, he can still flat out play. He can still flat out help you on the ice. I think if you have a good veteran core group, um, you can probably rein him in a little bit, have conversations with him. I'm, I would certainly assume that if a player like Connor McDavid approached you, and pleaded with you to get your shit together for the last X amount of games, I think you could pull that off. Um, and certainly coming off all the negative attention that, that Vander Kane's been getting, um, you would think that he'd do everything in his power to try to turn his image around. I know that you're going to have a lot of counterpoints, Holly, 
<laughs> That's my honest opinion. I, I do think if that, if that he can in fact help the group out with some secondary scoring, I don't mind the pickup. It just it comes at a cost and a risk. Craig, Craig where do you land on this? Well, I was going to ask you first. Where, where did you land on his press his kind of little well, press conference thing yesterday? It's a great question because what's he going to say? First of all, you can't you can't say exactly. I don't want Evander Kane on my team or anybody else for that matter. You can't go. The general manager is an idiot. I don't yeah. know what we're doing. We'd rather have a defenseman <laughs> or a goaltender. So he, yeah. right, he can't. But the one thing I think that. So sports are different than any other, obviously, occupation where the people, the fans who are in that city, they hold that close and dear to their heart. It's a piece of the fabric of who they are. So they want individuals who are really good people to be on their team, and they just want them to be able to come over for dinner, and that's the person they want to hang out with. So they don't want to see all the other stuff that comes with it, and that is not everybody's a really good person off the ice. And that that bothers them. They want... I want to win at all costs, but I want to do it with Ward Cleaver and everybody else. That's how old I am is. So he can't say anything. I just once. So once that happens and he comes in the room and it becomes a problem, like it was in San Jose, then everybody in, in the fan base gets to go, you know what? I told you so. We only want good people here. And now this is on the general manager and look, Connor McDavid, you were wrong because you welcomed him in. Evander Kane is being rewarded for shitty behavior. That's exactly so he got bought out for being a donkey in San Jose and doing stuff that wasn't proper, or wasn't right, or all that stuff. And now he gets to go play with arguably the best player in the world and the second best player in the world right now in dry sidle. And so what's the where's the punishment that Evander Kane has to get that he gave up all that money? Well, he's gonna get it back anyway. There's no well, his there, punishment, his no punishment was the suspension that he served. Nah. Well, he okay. served, he served his sentence, right? Like, I mean, at what point? Okay, I'm just playing devil's advocate yeah, yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. When you're suspended and you do come back, like, are you still are you still guilty? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, how do I word this properly? No, uh, I know what I you're saying. All he, I'm he, trying served, to say is, he served what the he's, punishment he's done, was. He's done his time. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and that's what it was. But he's yeah. continued to be rewarded. At seven million dollars a year, I mean, he's not going to get it in Edmonton. He's he's going to sign for whatever it is, and, but he's still right. being rewarded handsomely to go play a game. No, but is he though? It, his contract was, term, was terminated. I, I understand it. Like, I understand it's thought. terminated. But if I told you, and so Matt, this is that's where it becomes the the regular Joe guy going. Well, if you're going to make a million and a half dollars a year, I don't quite. I think that's pretty rewarded pretty handsomely. Is my point. For a guy making right. seven, yeah, it's not. but it's all relative. It's all re- it's all yes. relative, though. I know, I know, but, it's hard. It's hard to have these conversations because a lot of people just go, "Oh, okay, you're, you're, right. you're a millionaire." Like it's either the players. I mean, so I. It, but I mean, this is the business, right? And for sure, the way, and this and, is like this is hockey. Hockey, hockey is all goody goody boys all the time, right? We never really have a lot of issues that happen like this off the ice. You see it a lot in other sports. Yeah. So all of a sudden, one player is in a bit of trouble and we're all, Oh my God, like bring her pitchforks and go protest at the rink. I'm not condoning his behavior. All I'm saying is he's done his time. There's a team that's willing to pick him up. It's on them. If this, you know, falls flat in their face, you know, and it, and they have to suffer for it. But I think Holland's taking a risk. Sure. But if Evander Kane can help the team out, I mean, where's the argument? I think that's what it goes back to, right? The risk versus reward of it. Like it's hard to complain about wasting Connor McDavid and Dry Sidle's years if you don't try and take advantage of things like this, right? Like that's all I'm saying. Exactly. Go, and I'm not. I I wouldn't want the guy on my team based I've heard and know about him. But if I'm in a spot yeah. where shit, we're we're falling in the standings and my job's on the line if I don't try and pull this off, like and that, so I, yeah, I don't I don't advocate for it. I don't think it's necessarily going to be the move that puts them over the top. But they got they got to do something. Now think think of this for a second. Think of this. Think about how motivated he's going to be now to perform. Like, like it's not like he hasn't been playing either, by the way. He's just been playing a lot of hockey. Like, mm-hmm. he's got his lungs. He's got his legs. He's in game shape right now. And he is hungry. So, he, you, you can expect him to go into that lineup if, if he does. And I bet you he's going to light it up. I have a feeling he's going to play some very good hockey. That, now, maybe Wally, you're looking at it from a character <laughs> standpoint that he doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah. I guess that's another argument. But... But I'm saying as far as him being able to help the team out, I really do believe he will. They need a goaltender, Matt. They don't need a scoring they need that forward. Too. If, 
They do. They need secondary scoring. They absolutely need secondary scoring. But I do agree. Their main their main concern is between the pipes and Mike Smith not being healthy all the time. He's 39 years old. Um, I can speak to that. I'm 30. I I sprained my shoulder two weeks ago doing a workout in the gym. So, but but if they could address their goaltending, certainly that's the number one issue. But they needed a little bit more depth up front. And not only does he bring depth, he's tough. He plays hard. He's got that net front presence. Like he's He's legit, man. If he, can, if he can show up there and play good, he led. Was he not leading San Jose last year, the year before in scoring? Last year he was first, and the year before he was second in scoring on the team. I mean, like so, you're you're instantly adding an impact player. Anyway, I know a lot of people are not going to like my. It's my, the impact my, in the room uh, is the comments, problem. but it's the impact. Well, in he'll the be room. fine. I'm Matt. What do you think impact, will happen in the room? Like, what? How are these fine. guys going to receive him? Yeah, they're going to be fine with him. I guarantee. I guarantee you, no one's going to be sneering at him. No one's going to be talking shit behind his back. They're all going to welcome him with open arms. I promise you. And he's going to fit in just fine. I don't know how that would work long-term for him. I can't speak to his character off the ice, um, you know, away from the rink and away from the players, but around the players, I, I, they're going to, they're going to welcome him in there and he's going to do just fine. Or right, what do you think about the fan side of this then? Cause fans are obviously a little upset. Maybe that their team is looking at this guy. It, would you, can, would you say them, tell them that the risk might be worth it? Or is it just one of those where, you know what? The, the NHL well, he's got his arms crossed. I know, I, he's got his arms I'm worried crossed. He's, I'm worried he's going to yell and give it to me here. No, but, uh, it's, <laughs> is, is, is that something there? That, like the I mean, fan base it sees it differently. Age? So, yeah. so I know the spin is going to be, I agree. all the, like the reports are there being like, They've been able to land this guy who's a 30 goal scorer, who's I think seven times has scored 20 goals in his career. This is what they need to help Ottawa win mm-hmm. the, or to help Edmonton win the Stanley Cup. This is going to be what's going to hang a, a banner in the rafters. So people will buy in a bit, but they don't want their reputation tarnished as a city. They don't want to be they're the team that brought in Evander Kane, just like yeah. the Montreal Canadian fans weren't happy when Logan Mayu was signed, right? They, they, yeah, and what's Logan Mayu personal. doing now? He's lighting it up <laughs> and they don't care anymore. And well, that's right. Lighting we, it up. Yeah. Let him come to the team now. But the point I'm just like, saying, right? I'm not and everybody gets up in arms, but you know, it's yeah. so if they well, win, everybody gets up in arms. It's a great point. Man. We want to, we, we collectively want to bitch about everything. That's what we do. And we're yes. two years into a pandemic. Everyone's pissed off. I, <laughs> yes. I'm going to yell at my mailman if he doesn't put the mail in properly. You know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. the way it is. So here we are. I'd have your killer dogs but, go after him, but they're the nicest dogs I've ever met. Is, oh, um, yeah, four of them. So if Evander Kane lights it up and they win, yeah. no one's going to say a word. Just like if Logan Mayu is in the Montreal lineup, everybody's going to just go away. So here's a great, Alexi Yashin takes the year off, right? Everybody hates him. The C is stripped off his jersey. Nobody wants to see him in Ottawa again. He comes back the next year, scores 30 goals. And by the end of that season, people are cheering him scoring. That's yeah. exactly what's going to happen well, in Edmonton if Evander Kane lights it up. I know. Yeah, I agree. And I know Craig and you can agree with me on this based off of the current world we're living in now. We people get people have such a short memory now. Yes. You know, it'll it, the, the storm lasts for like a week on social media. You see people all the time, the celebrities that get into trouble, right? They'll lock their right. they'll lock their accounts for a little bit. The new the storm cycle. settles down, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden they're back. Yeah, exactly. And they're back, and it's like business as usual. So um, you know, that's that's why I'm saying these things that I'm saying about Evander Kane. I'm like, if he can go in there, and it really does come down to his play. If he can go in there and play well and be a, a bit uh, yeah. an impact player immediately, all these questions are gone. But yeah, the NHL needs bad guys too, right? Yes, the NHL do. needs villains. They sure. need bad guys. Thank you. And I think I he's agree. now granted. I mean, he's he's this is self inflicted, like you pointed out, but it's media yeah. driven too, right? Like it's yes. that guy is now under more scrutiny than anybody else and justifiably so so but yeah. the, the same is true he now has the same opportunity to earn his way out of there but look some what it does reason. look but, what it does we're talking about it. people are talking about him you know and that's that's news i'm not saying it's good news but it's just it's attention it's it's uh kind of touches on the villain thing so yeah I, anyway i'm babbling on at this point but yeah I, I i think we're all sort of in agreement here before we move on here to some contesty stuff or gung show do you guys think it'll work do you think Randall Kane will actually take this opportunity and harness it and come out the other side better? <laughs> how many, how many oh, chances? All, you you went all, psycho, all psychosemantic yeah. or will, whatever it is. Will it yeah. work? Will he? Yeah. Will this work or will he be I back, think, back on the pile, the UFA pile at the end of the day? I'll say this. I'll flush off my last point. I think he's going to play well. I don't know that he's going to sign long-term. 
with this group. I don't know that he'll be in the NHL long term, but I do think short term right now for the remainder of this year with the Edmonton Oilers, he'll be good. Brent, it's not think? just short term though, right? There's a lot of hockey. There's more than half the season left to be played. So this isn't like a pickup at the trade deadline where you're going to play 15, 20 no, no. games to try and, I agree. right? This is a bonus for them to be able to get him now into the lineup and get him working through it. I think it'll be fine. I don't think they're going to win because of him being in the lineup. Like at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to win the Stanley cup, but it's an interesting experiment to watch play out. The only thing I want to see on his first game, I want to see Kodak black in the building. Cause I think the hockey world oh, would lose its mind. <laughs> Kodak. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. Uh, one thing I would like to see is more pictures of uh, our fans and then people uh, as kids playing sports and stuff. Uh, Cause our friends are gong show. Uh, they've hooked us up with a puck luck game to give away. So if you got any of those pictures laying around of yourself, cause man, no kids sports, this is a bit of a bummer. No, uh, if you're taking your, maybe t- hitting an outdoor rink or something today. We can do. Yeah. It's about as good as it gets right now. So yeah. in the meantime, uh, we're looking for you guys to help us fill the void, relive some of those childhood sports memories uh, that you have out there. So um, if you got any of those pictures, uh, head on over to Twitter, tweet them at us or reply to our tweet that we put out the other day. Uh, use the hashtag Wally and Mathot, and you will be entered to win one of those sweet, sweet puck luck games from Gong Show. And we are going to announce the winner on our January 24th show. So you got plenty nice. of time. So dig through the basement, the boxes, whatever, find the best one where your hair is bad. Uh, you saw our picks there just a second ago. Uh, yeah. Have some fun with it. And yeah, we're. I want you to find more picks of you. We need more minor okay. hockey picks of Mark Mathot or any other sport you're playing. I got a bunch of, uh, I got a, yeah, I've got, um, I've got a bat like in the back there. I'll have to take like pictures with my mm. phone, of, <laughs> you know, but so they may, they might not be the best quality, you know, but uh, yeah. these new iPhones are pretty good. Well, I'll, I'll get a couple. Okay. I want to see some. I've got more. I've got a baseball picture I'm holding on to. So we'll wait till I release that one. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, We will uh, see you on Monday, everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend.